years, even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webwear, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices, and I'm actually on most of the really early on tutorials, okay? In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. Now that we have finished the basic company setup, I will show you, but I, I won't dive into, I will show you all the other things that you can set up here, okay? You can set up employees and additional uh, people that may need to access your studio. These are kind of just basic address codes, address types, um, payment types. I don't recommend setting up any new th things in this area until we move along. There is a rhyme or reason to why we do things in the manner that we do and our ability to set things up on the fly, okay? A lot of times people set up things incorrectly here and it throws off a lot of things, okay? And you can kind of just see the kinds of uh, sections that you're able to uh, add things to, okay? The room list, it, we talked about that earlier. I do set up one for every client. I don't do it from this section and I'll show you what that looks like a, a little later on. I just didn't want to neglect showing these areas. Okay, um, these are all important things to set up, but we must go in the order that we're, we're doing things, okay? This is typically going to have all the accounts that you need. There are instances where we may need to add or make things inactive. I like to use this as my uh, basic template, you know, and then I kind of adjust it as I go along okay and it you can see that this is pretty much tailored to a design business okay I always rename and add additional bank and credit card accounts as applicable but um, I'm not going to cover that until we get to the more advanced accounting if you are not well versed in accounting I kindly ask that you do not do this. I've seen people set these up and really throw off a balance sheet, okay? I want you to know because Studio is so customizable to how we do business, there is a way to set things up. So please don't jump ahead and just uh, start setting up things because you know that you need them or they may have been applicable in another software, okay? Um, that's often not the case. And not to say that you may not need extra codes and, and GL accounts and things like that, but most oftentimes you can accomplish most of what you need with the basics, okay? When in doubt, I always say ask, okay? Because it's a lot easier to ask than it would be to go in here and fix this, okay? I, I deal the, with a lot of mistakes handled internally, okay? And, and this is just one way to avoid that. Okay, and when you do set things up, we want to make sure that we understand everything that's affected when doing so. And I think, you know, that kind of just takes a little mindfulness on whoever's doing that. You do not want to have administrator access to everybody, okay, especially in the beginning. I'm going to continue on with the chart of accounts. You will hear me reference chart of accounts, GL codes. Uh, sales codes okay and I want to kind of give you the breakdown of what that actually means because one of the most difficult things that we encounter as a accountants is that we expect everybody to know what we're talking about when we use accounting verbiage and jargon right and, and that's not always the case so here I did take um, 
steps to do the renaming of certain accounts. So uh, with that, I made the ones that I do not want to see or I know that I'm not going to use at this time. Anyways, I made them inactive. Okay, and I'm going to show you which accounts those are. I made undeposited funds inactive, which I usually always recommend uh, for smaller businesses or people that are not used to using undeposited funds. Um, that is something that's very popular in QuickBooks and some other softwares. However, um, if you're not strong in accounting, I, I just don't recommend using that. I will provide instructions and a tutorial on how to use that if uh, those that are interested want to see that. Okay, but I also made petty cash, automobile, miscellaneous, payroll, and salaries, payroll tax. Okay, the reason why I made salaries and payroll tax inactive at this time is because I know that I'm not running payroll through my company. Okay, even if you're running it for yourself, if you're the owner, um, that, that's not going to be posted here. Okay, and I will explain that in another video for payroll specifically. But I made these things inactive. I made miscellaneous inactive because I, I dislike it. I don't recommend it for use to anybody because what ends up happening is when people don't know how to code something, they just throw it in miscellaneous. What happens after that is at the end of the year, we have a really large miscellaneous um, total because everything that was not discussed or was not uh, clear just gets coded there. Don't know why, but it does. Automobile expenses. Um, I don't always like to call things automobile expenses. I'm very mindful of how I use automobile because um, not everybody is uh, able to claim that, okay? And when I say that, I'm not gonna elaborate on it. I will uh, provide the link that I use, but I'm, I am gonna go ahead and pull it up. You can see this is the IRS website, okay? Um, when in doubt, reference that, save your documentation. Okay, but you can clearly see that um, you can deduct things, you know, car expenses and such, but uh, you need to be mindful and keep accurate record. Okay, uh, I know some people may be under the impression that this might not be such a big deal. It is. The IRS is cracking down more and more on how we use things and how we're uh, keeping our records. So. If, you, if it is your uh, goal to claim these types of expenses, I highly recommend that you immediately keep track of mileage, starting, ending, and all of that, and you document personal and uh, business, okay? Because they are going to want to see it, especially if you only have one vehicle, okay? Make it make sense, okay? I do also have this publication. It is uh, downloadable for you. It's publication 535, which basically breaks out business expenses that you can and can't take. I think it's important to, to know this, uh, especially for somebody who is doing uh, bookkeeping work for an owner or designer. Okay. Um, don't just arbitrarily code things. Uh, make sure that it makes sense for what you're doing. Okay. And I didn't really do much. I did add in capital contribution and owner distribution accounts. I will explain how to use that later. Okay, and then um, down over in uh, overhead expenses or administrative expenses, I want to clarify what that means also. Um, when, we, when we talk about the cost of sales and sales income, I'm gonna break out a really good detailed explanation of how that works, because basically, cost of sales, and I know everybody wants to use these cost of sales accounts, the way Studio is set up, you're not going to be coding anything to these. If something must be coded to a cost of sales account, know that I'm looking to charge the client, right? So if that's the case, I want it as an item set up on the projects, okay? That's how I'm teaching it, and that's what I would recommend, okay? I don't code anything here. And it, it's for a very specific reason. I will point that out uh, in the vid videos to come. But I'm very, I'm very mindful of the things that go here because this is basically we're saying that the cost of sales is the expense that it took to earn whatever income is being claimed on those specific line items. So just to be clear, 
So sales fabric here does have a cost of sales fabric here. See how that works? So setup is important, okay? And I did add some other accounts. I renamed others. If you want to know the details on that, you can see the notes and additional information in the downloads.